Welcome back, everyone. My goodness, we've covered such a diverse range of topics uh, here at WFS Live. This is now on day four, our 30th panel. You cannot say you're not getting value for money in terms of content. And by the way, if you've got any uh, any friends who aren't already signed up to WFS Live who would like to check out the content, but they're not a delegate, just um, direct them to the Live Now Global platform and they'll be able to see it there. It's available on uh, a number of different social networks, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also LinkedIn, uh, if they uh, so desire. So we're going to move now on to uh, an absolutely fascinating topic. And it's great to get the insight to, uh, of, of some people who are absolutely crucial in terms of the way that football works. And the, the world of the, of the football agent is intense. It is relentless. Now, it can be a very simplistic point of view to think that it's just all about uh, earning incredible sums of money off back of big mega money transfers, that's often the opinion that some people arrive at. But actually, it's a lot more than that. What does it entail to represent a footballer? It's about plotting the, the best route for the development of their clients to best suit their needs. And of course, those needs will, will change and evolve over time. It's about providing that pastoral care as well. It's about doing your research. You know, agents see a lot of games. They watch their clients. They look to recruit new ones. Um, they have to meet with clubs, not just to do deals, but to maintain relationships. Uh, and the role of an agent is, is ever more complex. It's very multifaceted. Sometimes they can find themselves working for the clubs as well as players. It, it can be a very complex picture indeed. Um, however, FIFA have been trying to look to limit the influence of football agents and so tff or the football forum was formed and they want to show best practice in football agency and give a voice to players and agents so what is it really like let's get some real insights here into what it's like to be an agent in the world of football we've got some of the biggest names in the game in this next panel to give us their insights they're all representing the football forum and here they are uh, we have with us uh, the vice president sir jonathan barnett welcome jonathan a uh, president Hi. mino raiola and uh, director Daniele Bocucci, benvenuti in Trambi, and uh, to guide what I'm sure will be a fascinating conversation, uh, our moderator, uh, one of my colleagues uh, at Sky Sports, based in, in Italy, journalist and broadcaster Gianluca Di Marzio. Uh, Gianluca, benvenuto. It's, it's very rare to get such access uh, to names like Jonathan and Mino in particular, uh, isn't it? I cannot wait to see what this conversation will have in store for us. So over to you. Ciao David, ciao David, uh, nice to meet you and sorry for my English is not fluent as yours and I, I would like to, to talk about football transfers and ask Mino and Jonathan the future of their uh, of their guys but we will talk later. I, I, th I think I think the, at the beginning uh, b before before talking uh, about football forum uh, I would like to, to to spend some words for for Diego Armando Maradona because uh, because you are you are the most important agency in the world. Jonathan is the the richest and and Mino is the is the best no <laughs> but but Diego Armando Maradona was 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 unique no so uh, cl close your eyes and, and dream you 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 were uh, you were Diego Armando Maradona agent uh, Mino and and Jonathan what are you thinking now? Um, it's a sad day to lose such a incredible person as Diego Maradona at such a young age of 60. Um, obviously off the field he had a lot of problems but on it he was just majestic. I have memories of seeing him play for many years uh, and I saw, I've seen him play for Argentina and I've seen him play for Naples and all around the world. So I have many, many uh, fond memories of him and I met him and he was always a very nice person and he'll be deeply missed but his memory will live on forever. Mino, yeah, Mino will, from, will never, will, 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 will never born a, a new Maradona, a new Maradona. Well, I, I don't think that I will live it. I hope that I can see it because uh, that's uh, the hope for, for the football world, for the whole world. For me, it's something special because you know that my family, I'm from Napoli. So that brings an extra dimension uh, for us. He gave us back our dignity. He made us proud. He made us count. He made us feel <laughs> value in, uh, in, in, in football, but also in life. He resisted the, the call of Juventus that was uh, more important for us than maybe winning the championship. He was a unique man in and off the field. And I think that different of what other people say about his life off the field, I think that the whole, as a man that he was, he, he lived his life like he wanted, not seeking confirmation of other people, but uh, doing what he wanted, how he wanted nonetheless what other people thought about it. I think that is the best football player that has ever lived until now. 
uh, including with all the players that there is now, without a doubt, is the only. Uh, uh, well, he's a player that I saw play live. I met him one time in Argentina. That gave me uh, that gave me the joy of, uh, of of seeing something that would maybe resemble a miracle. You know, when you see a miracle, you say, "What the hell?" And you know that when you see it, you know that you will not see it again. So uh, it's a very sad day, but uh, I, I I find the the quote of Pele fantastic. Uh, Pele saw the, I saw the quote of Pele said, "The world has lost a legend. He has lost a friend." But now football will be played in heaven. So I, I go for that. And uh, yeah, it's a very sad day for Napoli in particular, for the world football in particular. And uh, yeah, as, as an agent, you can only... I, I hope always to find this kind of people, persons, not players. Because for me, it's the person that is uh, the interesting guy, you know. And uh, So I'm sad. But uh, he told us to go on, and we will go on in his memory. That's what we will do. I hope not to cry anymore because I, I cried last year, la, yesterday in, in Sky Sports Live. So I hope not to cry anymore. Daniele, Daniele Bocucci, uh, uh, what, what's Football Forum? And, 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 and Diego Armando Maradona would have joined Football Forum as a player. Look, I, I think I, I think he would have. I think he would have. Uh, because he has been fighting for the rights of the player, at least he has raised his voice in the past for the rights of player. Uh, you could agree with him or not, but uh, there's no doubt that he cared about that very much. It was not only about him, as Mino said, it was about the other people for him. And I'm quite confident that this is a kind of spirit we can share. What is it, the Football Forum? The Football Forum is uh, an international association movement, as we call it, of uh, football agents and, uh, and players. We have uh, some uh, uh, senior members here who do not need any introduction, Jonathan and Mino. And we have other people sitting in the board who belong uh, certainly to the excellences of, uh, uh, of football agencies and many other members are joining us so we are quite happy with that member members are coming from all over the world we have you have different size of agencies uh, we um, have different backgrounds but uh, we are united in our mission which is what what really matters so you know we we had to take into account when doing this, when setting this up, and at the time it was Jonathan and Mino, I hadn't joined yet the football forum, that nowadays the agency world has evolved very much. Yeah? Now there are, in some cases, agencies have more than 100 of employees. That's, uh, but there are still some individual agencies, but you really need to take into account all of the different size and business, which we did. This association was initially uh, set up, established as an association of uh, agents. And then the more we kept on working on what was good in our view for football and what were, you know, was good for the category, the more we realized that the, we, we had to include players because the interests of agents and interests of players are the same. What is good for, player is, for players is good for agents. There's no doubt about this. So uh, this year we opened the association for players and now we have uh, the football forum. Uh, we want to give uh, uh, a voice and this is a peculiarity of this association. You have individuals, be that agents or agencies or players, but everybody can, you know, just come there and tell openly what he likes or what he doesn't like, and how he will change it. And we want to give them the possibility to have a voice uh, whenever there is an issue which uh, it is important for them. These months have showed that now many important reforms have been uh, pushed, reform which might restructure the football and not necessarily in a good way, as we think this is not the case. I can name salary cap for players, and there's new agents regulations which someone is threatening to, uh, to issue, which we think it will be really detrimental for, the, uh, for, for football. This is simply not good for football. So 
just to sum up, one other important box of this association is that uh, we uh, provide a good network. We want to identify the, uh, you know, the right mm -hmm. platform for uh, establish the best practice for agents and to provide also this in the best interest for players. I think this is a nutshell. What what was the introduction, Gianluca? Can I? Why, add? Mino? Si. Yes. Yeah, can I add? I think it was very important when uh, Jonathan and me, we met actually. The only thing that FIFA did good is they put me and Jonathan sitting next together in a meeting in Zurich. And they shouldn't have done that because they, cre <laughs> they created their biggest enemies. But okay, that's the only thing that came good out of that meeting. Now, but what, with all, with all respect, I think that what, what, we, what we as agents also saw was that we were not being represented in the industry on the table of the industry actually we live in an industry that is a very strange industry everything is around players you know i gave to me this morning the example about also the ea sport matters that we have taken into our hands and it is like this you have actors and actors need a theater it is not that you had a theater and that's why actors uh, were born there were actors and the theater was born but in this industry, this is the only industry where the actors, the players, don't have a say about nothing. Everything is decided by other people. So we are not representatives, we are not stakeholders in none, none of the associations. We are not stakeholders in the national leagues, so in the VGC or in the Kaver Bay in Holland or in the FA in England, we don't have a seat. We are not stakeholders in UEFA, yeah. we are not stakeholders in FIFA, but we represent the most important part of the industry, the players. So actually what we are used to see is that we get a letter at the end of whatever, saying what some people that live in Canada and only saw baseball and ice hockey for the rest of his life has decided to do about football. And me and Jonathan, we were a little bit uh, uh, fed up by people that were not interacting with us and saying, listen, what do you think? How do you think that this thing is better? But were telling us what they had invented for strange regulations that were very damage, da damaging the players. Because at the end of this, if something would have come out that was good for the players, we would not have an argument to fight it. Because at the end of the ride, we represent the, the best interest of the players. But everybody could see, everybody that is in the interest of the players can see what FIFA is doing is only making the role of the players smaller and weaker. And this is not about regulating the agents. This is about building power of who is the power on this football industry. And that's clearly what FIFA wants, you know. So it was more to be represented on the table of the industry and to try to change it. That's why me and Jonathan, uh, Jonathan had this idea to, to, to start working together and put up an association. And during the line, we saw that the association has to be open and it will be open for players, for uh, agents, but also for trainers, because we live in the same uh, industry. When we talk about FIFA and, and what FIFA wants to do for, for uh, against the players, but Jonathan, what, what, do, what do agents do? Uh, we see a lot about uh, agents in the media, no? But what do agents really do for the players and, and the game as a whole? Well, according to FIFA, nothing. Um, the problem is, <clears throat> or I say that, FIFA and the people in it have absolutely no idea they should ask the same question because they don't know what agents actually do for players. Um, for example, all the uh, all the agents in the world, I don't think that the the hierarchy of FIFA have ever set foot in an agent's office. I don't think they've ever seen anything the agents do, and they are basically talking from a position of complete ignorance. Um, we don't just negotiate contracts. I employ, I'm part of a large organization. Uh, my company is owned by ICM, an American corporation, and which we recently sold to them. But as agents, we're not just there on a Thursday in the window to look after a player. 
Uh, we look after everything about the player. Because if we weren't there, the players would not be earning the money they do. And that's what I care about, the welfare of the player. So we look after everything that they want us to do. So we work 365 days a year. We have marketing people. We have social media people to look after their social media. We have people to look after their every bit of interest because they, they need to be looked after. And we have to make sure that from the moment they sign with, with us or with the club to the moment they retire, they are looked after and have money to go on and live a different life. Before we came you know about, if I, can give you an example, if I can give you an example, in 1966, I'm English, the English won the World Cup, which is the greatest moment in the British history. The, of the 11, those days there weren't agents around, of the 11, I believe eight of them had to sell their shirts, their memorabilia, they had nothing. Were they looked after by the clubs? No. Were they looked after by FIFA? No. Were they looked after by anybody? No. They had to carry on working for the rest of their lives. I can guarantee you this, any of my players, when they retire, if we, when we win something or they play for England or they play for a top clean, they will never have that problem again. We, lock, we really do look after our players and it's a full-time job. We, we employ a lot of people and we, their day-to-day -day life is looked after completely. And that is what we do. You know, Gianluca, Gianluca Mino, Mino, I Mino, I, I'm, ready, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do a, a TV series eh, about, about the agent's job. So if I can see what you really do with the camera yeah. that follow you every day. So we, 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 we can talk <laughs> about, we can talk about the contract. But uh, Sky cannot pay it. Okay, they don't okay. have enough money you, you, to pay You are it. my but manager. No, you are my manager for but, that. Okay. But you know, you know, I make it very simple. What we do is we defend, mm. we protect, and mm. we help players. Today, I think that today you see it yourself. The football industry became very complicated. It's not one thing anymore. You need to be a fiscalist. You need to be a lawyer. You mm. need to be. Uh, you need to be father. commercialist. A father, a mother. Uh, you Brother. need you need a lot of you need a you need a lot of things. The football industry became from an amateur sport, like Jonathan said, and in the '66, players would uh, work and then maybe go to train in the morning or in the afternoon, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, to 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 big deal contracts, right owners, to in important contracts by moving a transfer from one side to another side and not capturing uh, fiscal problems in one country in another country. Also by moving other people that have other interests in. So what we mainly do in this agency is to defend and protect players and then try to help to evolve their career. It's a complicated matter because today, uh, when I started, you had, for example, only three categories in image rights. Today you have 63 categories. So uh, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is complicated. It is not as simple as anymore as it was, like the whole football world is. But I always said this to also to clubs. You think that you come inside the club and that they give you the highest salary because they are nice people. <laughs> if there would be that, then there wouldn't be necessary for agents. But we would also not need lawyers and not need judges and not need anything. So, yes, we are a counterpart of the clubs, but we don't want the bad part of the clubs because people think that agents are out for blood of the clubs. We are not out for blood of the clubs. I always said we need to balance the club's power that they have because in front of the club the club always manages to have professional managers professional cfos professional ceos professors of industries or etc etc and if you want to sit at that table you have to have the right experience and a boy of 18 with a father that doesn't know what we are talking about in this industry cannot be the counterpart of that industry not even a normal lawyer that doesn't know about this industry can be the counterpart. It is a very specialized area. Like I think got, that I would not be a good agent for a for a for a volleyball or biking uh, person or for the Formula One. <laughs> so it is so it is getting so specialized, and this specialism we have in these agencies, and it is to defend, to protect, and to help those players. I think I think what Mina says is one hundred percent correct, but I, it's very simple. An agent's job 
is to protect the player. And the agent's job is to look after his life so that when he retires, if he decides he wants to carry on working, it's because he wants to and not because he has to. That is our only responsibility. We have to, we have a give, we, God gives us, we are given this responsibility. We take it very seriously and we have to perform properly to protect these people because nobody else will. That is a fact and it's a proven fact. And so that's what we do. We don't make apologies for what we do, but we do it. Now, you, you, you said w w how it's important you know, to, be, to, to be an agent and, and what the agents do for the, for the player. But why in this COVID period, FIFA, we, I, re I, I read every day in the newspapers, and I, I think it's FIFA, it's FIFA, thinking, FIFA, FIFA thinking about that, to regulate yeah. the agents' market with caps commissions. No, FIFA thinks it's, that uh, agents earn earns too much. Earn too much is 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 true. But, what you but listen, your listen. Position, I will, I will, no, no, let, 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 let me talk, to you. Gianluca. There is no, there is no problem of caps agents. The problem is this: mm. FIFA has a huge problem with themselves. They know that they are considered a very untransparent, not correct organization, and they needed a scapegoat to have a problem with, so that the world would look at the attention of somebody else and not to the real problems of FIFA. And that's why they said we need a cap on commissions or something else. Because in the whole world, if I would say to you, you know, we need a cap on the sales of uh, Fiat Cinquecento, people would say, well, you're crazy. We live in communist country. We are, or we need a cap on uh, how much uh, a pizza can cost. They say, well, everybody can ask for a pizza 500 euros. If you want to pay, you pay it. If you don't want to pay. It's very strange that you live in an industry where the directors of the clubs are all educated, university or big businessmen or et cetera, et cetera. And you think that they cannot make an own decision of what to pay for the services of a player. But first of all, it's the services of the player and it is a problem between us and the players first. Second, we don't need a cap, like nobody needs a cap of something else. This is not about us. This is a FIFA that needs to put the attention to somebody else and this is about power. FIFA is trying to hold power. What does FIFA at the end want? Mm. Have their own FIFA bank, have their own FIFA transfers, have everything in FIFA. From being the organization of a world championship, now they want to start organizing also clubs and games and everything else. So we are now, <laughs> let's say, the four fighters, the Robin Hood of football. So the cap is only uh, an excuse to fight and to say, okay, we need the cap uh, agents. But if you need the cap agents, we need to cap transfers. We need to cap the salaries of the president. We need to cap. We need to cap the number of the sponsors that are in FIFA. The height of how much uh, Pepsi or Coca Cola will pay for the for the World Championship. It is a bullshit. It's a big bullshit, and it is illegal. Can I just say, I agree one hundred percent with Mina. 100% with Mino, but let me just, it's how ridiculous and absurd this is. FIFA have come out with rules about agents. Again, I say to you, not one member of the FIFA or the hierarchy have ever set foot in an agent's office. Not one of them really knows what an agent does. How can somebody, it's like asking with all due respects, the members of Sky Television to do to make rules for FIFA. It's the same thing. They don't know what they do. So how can they make rules? How can you sit down around a table and make rules for FIFA for agents if you don't know what they do? It's it, it's a political thing led by Mr. Infantino, who has his own problems. And I think it's a reflect deflect. We're easy targets because. The press love to write about us. You know, they say crazy things about us and it's easy. So if it's a political thing by the hierarchy of FIFA to shed to, uh, light on things that deflect it away from what they're doing. They don't look after players' interests, they say so. 100% of them, and we're going to court to show that. And what we wanted is not unreasonable. We agree there has to be in everything rules. But we said to, we are quite prepared to sit down with FIFA and help to write the rules. 
They have never wanted to do that. They want to just impose a set of rules on us. How can that be possible? You've got to take into account our, the person you, you, you want to do it with. And second of all, I don't know about Mino, but I have never taken a gun to a, to a player's head and said, you've got to sign with me or you can't leave me. If we're not doing, they sign, we sit down, they come to us or we go to them, they want us to represent them. What we do, what agreement we do with the player has nothing to do with FIFA or anybody <laughs> else. It's our business. If the player doesn't, if I ask for 90% and the player doesn't want to give us it, he won't sign with us. He'll walk away. There isn't one player ever that has been upset by what we charge. That is not, uh, such a stupid thing for FIFA to say. It is absolutely ludicrous. But it is also, uh, Gianluca, not important because when FIFA mm. says these kind of things, they act as if the directors of football clubs are not able to make their own decisions. So let's mm. say that if a director of football club says to your, your, to you, that you, you mm. come to them and you say, guys, I know that your father was one of those. I saw mm. a football player, amazing, mm. amazing. And he would have the guts to say, he is the new mm. Maradona. Mm. Mm. Now, if the football club that says to your father, you met the new Maradona, I want to give you a bike, a car, a trip to Hawaii, mm. or a, a life for a, a job for a life, it's up to the clubs themselves. Some clubs are in stock exchange. Mm. They have rules mm. of the national law. It's not about FIFA that they have to tell you how to run a club. Now, mm. if they think that the club owners and the club directors are stupid, then they should attack them, not us. We have to be transparent to our players, to our clients. They are our players. They have, we have a responsibility to do. Not against FIFA, but FIFA is needing this fight to put the fight on other teams and to see not the big problems that FIFA has. Because obviously it is obvious that the transfer system is not anymore of this time. It's not possible to sell a human right anymore in the way that FIFA wants without that they are in command, the players. It's time that the players take back their position and that is that they are the most important asset of this game and not Mr. Infantino. Because if it would be for Mr. Infantino, does Mr. Infantino has a diploma to become president of FIFA? Because if he has that diploma, I want to see what kind of diploma he has. Mino, Mino well, I, Jonathan, well, what, what do you think about what do you think about salary caps? You know, because uh, uh, the, the clubs. But say if we do sal cannot, but cannot, Gianluca, cannot, if we do salary cap, yeah. let's do everything mm. cup. Salary cap, transfer cup, then do uh, then let's do everything cup. We cannot do only salary cup. I agree with the salary cup if we do also transfer mm. cup. But we don't do a transfer cup. Because if you do a transfer cup, then instead of paying 150 million for Griezmann to Atletico Madrid, you pay 150 million to Griezmann. No? In what? sign on fee. So you, why, no, should, no. why should we do a cap? Why should we do a cap when clubs earn more money than a normal company? Real Madrid and Barcelona last year almost made a billion. A billion. Do we ask them to cap? Do we ask them to say the ticket is too high or your, your shirt rights are too high? You cannot sell the shirt for 100 million? We are only there to be a part of the industry that the players created by their talent. And it's not up to them to make a cap. It's up to them to decide which money they want to pay for something that they want to pay or not. It's Gianluca, not my problem Gianluca. if Barcelona buys three players and they don't play. What is it? My fault. If they buy uh, Dembele, Griezmann and Coutinho and they don't play. It's my fault. It's the fault of the player. Gianluca, Gianluca why should there be a salary cap? Jack. People... People go to football to watch great players, so they deserve the money. They don't the uh, every, everything else around football is incidental. If you don't have great players, you don't have a game. But the Jaluka, respect, if there is a salary cup, if there is a salary cup for players, there should be a salary cup for actors, for journalists, for doctors, for uh, for uh, artists, for uh, uh, Banksy, for the new Leonardo da Vinci. For the new Rembrandt, because there were, then there would be a cap on talent. How can you cap? How you can cap a talent? How can you cap a talent? How can you cap a talent if tomorrow Maradona walks in and you say, "I need you, not I need you. I want you to play for my audience. I want you to play in my shirt. 
There has to be a salary cap. How? What Look. is the cap? It goes how? Is it, we are living in a capitalist world where we do everything in a capitalist way. But Mr. Impatino wants to go back to North Korea. I have no problem with North Korea. Go live in North Korea. I'm not in Switzerland. Why does Mr. Infantino lives in Switzerland and he doesn't bring the FIFA out and just put it in London or put it in Milan or something? Mino, 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 When you go to do a deal with a club, it's run by men, chief executives, very successful businessmen. Nobody forces them to play one penny more. I cannot make, I cannot go into a club and force them to pay more than they want to do. It's a fallacy. We can't do that. So they are paying what they think is the right money. Why should there be a salary cap? The salary cap is there. It's for what they can pay. If they overpay, they're idiots. And that's what you got. They pay what they can pay. So all this salary no, but, cap. But, but, but Gianluca, pay. if there is a salary cap, there must be a salary cap for a reason. Mm. And why you don't put a salary cap then in actors? You have actors in the world today that make more money than in football players. Eh? We have actors of uh, Marvel, know, of etc. that make 50, 75 million to make one film, one film, 75, 75 or 100 million. But because FIFA, puts this always in a sort of illegal way. Look what he makes. They, they, they mobilize the entire world of saying, oh, that it, is a, it has to be something of a shame for. But it is not. It is you're being, you're being evaluated of your talent. Now, if you're being evaluated wrongly by the club, it's a problem sure. of the club, not a problem of us. But FIFA wants to, to hear to you, wants to talk to you, wants to, to sit no, at the don't. table to no, you. No, no, no. FIFA, FIFA no, wants to use us. FIFA wants me to come to the table. FIFA wants us to come to the table and to say, mm. we spoke mm. with you. We asked mm. you. But we said, mm. if you want to talk to us, we make a blank paper, blank, mm. blank. Mm. And we start mm. writing what we want. But not mm. that I come there and you tell me what you have decided. And then you tell me, but I told you so. This is not how it works. Hmm. Okay. I will, and also, we, this, we, I don't we, think we, I don't think this is different than Jonathan. We have a little bit of a difference there. I don't recognize hmm. the power of hmm. FIFA. For me, FIFA is not something that should dictate uh, the, so the, the, the law. So what's the solution, Mino? What's the what's the solution, Mino? What's the a solution? new system? A new system. New. MLS did it. MLS created 20 years ago a new system. MLS 20 years ago said we have nothing to do with FIFA. Nothing. FIFA said that MLS was something ridiculous. You know what they did? FBI arrested the half of FIFA and they gave them the world championship. Here I you just are. want to say what FIFA. Let me just say yeah. forget in the future, there's going to be a lot, hopefully a lot of changes. But meanwhile, hmm. if FIFA keep saying about consultancy, it's rubbish. Consultancy is when two people get together and try to come to terms. It's not when one pe person walked into to a room and said, here are the rules, take it or leave it. That's not consultation. That's rubbish. And the things they say about agents are unbelievable. My last thing I want to say, because I think maybe time is running out, the things that FIFA say are a disgrace, and I want to make it very clear. When they say they want to protect players, players want to come to agents, not to FIFA. Second of all, they say that all this is bad, bad things about agents. I challenge them. How many people that work for FIFA have been accused and convicted of crimes? How many people, how many agents have been convicted of crimes? Which one is the worst? That's all. There's a so give me a, give me an that's all and when they come out and say there's this thing happening that thing happening prove it they haven't got no proof of anything they say they just make these stupid claims to try and take the headlines because they know that's what everybody wants and it's outrageous yes. and all we want yes. is a yes. fair chance so yeah, Luca, what about me, the image rights? No, what about what about no, the image Luca, rights? I will, I, will, I will tell you let me let me tell you about what Jonathan also says mm. 
It's very important because Jonathan started with that. Of course, we need to improve a lot of things. We are the first one that wants to improve, okay? We're not saying that uh, the world is perfect. There are bad directors of football. There are good directors of football. There are bad uh, agents. There are good agents. But there is a system to regulate that, and that system has quality system and not what they want to do. And the market, the economic market, regulates themselves. The best survive. The worst, at the end, they will die. And this is normal, okay? What we want to do with TFF, we want to give everybody a chance to make a life and a good life out of it and to work in a certain way. And that's also the matter what FIFA does. FIFA, for example, with the EA Sports and the ultimate game, the ultimate game that they did with EA Sports, they are exploiting the rights of football players, the personal image rights of football players for themselves, not for somebody else, not for the good of football, not for, for FIFA. The money goes to FIFA, they decide, they do, they don't ask anybody, they don't ask any players, they don't distribute, they do nothing. They use the rights to let themselves grow. This is not correct. This is right of football players. And this right of football players need to be respected. You need to understand that if people talk about the cap, is there a cap on the sales of iPhones? Is there a cap of the, the how, much, uh, how much a singer can make? This cap is going back 75 years ago in economically Russian communist times. It is not of this world anymore. You live in a highly multi-billionaire industry where you need to make sure that everybody's rights are respected and everybody's rights are defended and that everybody is heard in an equal way. And FIFA is 50 years behind, Gianluca. FIFA will, in now in 10 years, you can write it down, doesn't exist anymore. The, the golf association don't have a FIFA. And golf is being played over the whole world. Tennis is changing. A Formula One is changing. There is only one problem with FIFA. They divide power, they divide jobs, they divide money, and that's how they keep everybody happy. And we, Gianluca, we come from Italy. We know which kind of organizations do that. We know that. My lawyers say I cannot tell it because then they bring me to court. But I would love to be going to court against them. But we know from which country we come from and what kind of organizations are like that. Because they are so untransparent and they don't do nothing for somebody else that it is not good for them. So uh, FIFA is on their last decade of existing. In 10 years' time, me and Jonathan, we will not uh, be in this industry maybe anymore, but FIFA will also for sure not be in this industry, for sure. It's difficult to be a referee eh? well, today with, <laughs> from Jonathan and Mino. What about image rights, Jonathan? And then give me two minutes to talk about football transfers. <laughs> Jonathan. Okay. Image rights? The image rights belong... It's very simple. Image rights belong to the person who... who the player they it's their image right it's for them to sell and it's for them to uh to have nobody else it's simple there's, there's nothing to discuss a player owns his own image right or sells them that's it they're not taken from him it's illegal and that is it and we're going to get cut off now so you won't be able to ask me about I'm, I'm gonna, i'll tell you what, what i'm going to do uh, Gianluca, we both work in broadcasting What's so countdown? i know What's you know how to talk to the eh? well i'm going to give you a minute i'm going to give you one minute Go one on minute, transfers only if you one can. Minute. One oh, minute. Mino, Let's go. Allora, in one minute. Donnarumma future. Ibrahimovic future. Pogba future. And Mkhitaryan future. And for Jonathan, okay, Bale future. I, I, <laughs> I will tell you. The future of Donnarumma, fantastic. Of Mkhitaryan, fantastic. Of Zlatan, uh, fantastic. Oh, how much uh, do you want to do more? Pogba. Pogba, yeah. Paul. Pogba future. Fantastic. They all sleep <laughs> well. Their future is written in the sky, in the stars. And it's all going well. Everybody will be happy. No, it's going to I be new to... Donnarumma with Milan. It's going to be know. new Donnarumma with Milan. And then Jonathan will, 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 will answer. Have to no, ask I will to ask you. Yeah. Listen, I have, from Milan. I have Gianluca. I look after nearly yeah. 800 players. I look after yeah. nearly 800 players. And they're all going to have a wonderful future. Because they, they've got yeah. me for an agent. And that's simple. <laughs> Do you, do you know what we need to do, Gianluca? We we need to go and yeah. raise some money so that we can okay. go and do that that documentary. Yeah, we're going to go and do yeah. that documentary. We're going to have to convince Mino or Jonathan one of these days. <laughs> me I'm and ready, you I'm make ready. a cross country <laughs> partnership. I have Sky doubt, in England, I have Guy Jonathan in Italy. Mino could be my manager. I don't know. I have a choice from. <laughs> 
Uh, do you, you know what? You, I, go with him. Go with him. He's a better agent. I'm getting old. Go with him. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, oh, can I just say, it's, been, it's, 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 been, it's been a fantastic conversation. It's been uh, obviously very fiery. You guys have had some points of view you wanted to express. It would be interesting to see what the FIFA response would be. It sounds like you would actually welcome the communication on a genuine basis, not to set out the rules and regulations to you, but so that you could have a meaningful conversation. You know, we, we've lived yeah, through a very I'm difficult good. time here over the last nine months. And I think actually the spirit of collaboration is one that you're starting to see just green shoots of. And I do wonder uh, in the world where, where FIFA and where football agents both reside, whether there there could be some sort of peaceful conclusion. That would be nice, wouldn't it, for 2021? But well, we, we will see. We want to respect. All we want is to sit down, come up with a, to work together with FIFA. We are not going to be servants to FIFA. That's the difference. No, I, 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 I understand that. I hear you. I hear you. Well, if you are... Uh, willing to sit down with them and, and have uh, that respectful you know chat between you i'm sure uh, that we could either carry it live on sky sports in the uk or in italy or we could do so on world football summit whichever way i you can like. i can um, i can wear i can wear a mic i can wear a mic and a little camera <laughs> no problem at all <laughs> guys we're gonna have to call it a do day it i'm for so me, sorry do thank it you for so me. much Thank you so much uh, to, to Jonathan, yeah, to yeah. Mino, for Daniele as well, for providing the context of the, of, of the Football Forum and how you came into being, and also for Gianluca uh, for your moderation. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. Wow. I, I think I need to go and have a lie down now, uh, but I'm not going to because we've still got two more panels to go. Yeah, I know, right? Eight down, two to go, and we've still got the La Liga president, Javier Tebas, on the way very, very soon. But in meantime, we're going to be speaking about a little bit more of a delicate topic. And actually, it's one that does really require discussion. We are rewriting masculinity, sports challenge against toxic gender stereotypes. As we say, it's going to be a fascinating discussion as well. Please stick around for that. It's coming up in just a few minutes' time. <laughs> 